at U.S. Sportsbook and Casino. All right, welcome back to Silver and Black today. Hope you guys are having a great week or had a great week. We're back with you here as an Odyssey Sports Original Podcast. Also, you can hear us on 1015 KDON in Las Vegas. That's on the FM side. Also, the Bet Las Vegas. So we are back on the radio for the season. We appreciate you being with us. Scott Branson, along with my partner, Mo Moten. Mo is the senior NFL writer over at Bleach Report covering the NFL. He also writes about the Raiders up on sportsnot.com. You can also catch my work up on sportsnot.com. Make sure you follow Mo on X, M-O-E, M-O-T-O. N is how you find him. I am at LV Gully, and the show is SNB Today. Do us a favor. Also, subscribe wherever you get your podcasts, wherever you get your audio. Just look for us. Subscribe to the show. If you're listening to us on the radio, you're going to hear us on Sundays. But guess what? We have more shows. You can listen and, and do that by subscribing to the podcast. And uh, hello to everybody watching us on video as well. You can subscribe to our YouTube page. All right, Mo, we're back uh, in camp. Veterans arrived on or Monday, 23rd. Uh, we had Antonio Pierce do his first press conference of training camp on Monday. We'll get into some of the pieces of that as well as some other news. But I wanted to start here, buddy, because um, – we had questions, right, leading up to camp, especially after the mini camp and OTAs, which was how is Colton Miller doing? They asked Antonio Pierce, and he said that they would have an update later in the day, and they did. They released their pup list, physically unable to perform list. On that list is the left side of the Raiders' offensive line. Not just Colton Miller, but also Jackson Powers Johnson, the, the, the rookie that the Raiders are counting on heavily to come in and play that role. And it's early, so not time to freak out yet, Mo, but I want to get your thoughts because we talked about it a lot, but I think now uh, you get to camp and these guys, especially a rookie, they're coming in and we know how important that offensive line is and we don't know how either one of these guys is going to come along and when they're going to be able to get out there and work out with the team. I'm not putting my whole hand on the panic button yet for either of these players, <laughs> But I do have three of my fingers on the panic button for Jackson Powers Johnson. I'll explain why in a minute. Now, Colton Miller, mm. I think I expressed this last week that as long as he's ready for week one, he's fine. Yep. He's a vested veteran. He's been on the team since 2018, a first round pick uh, under the Gruden regime. So I, I'm not worried about Colton Miller right now. Because as you said, they can come off the pup list at any time. Just because you're on a pup list doesn't mean you miss time. Right. You're not guaranteed to miss time until... If you if you're not off the pup list by the time the, ha the team finalizes their initial 50 man roster, then you're going to miss multiple weeks of the regular season. But at this point in time, you can come off the pup list at any point. So I'm not worried about Colt Miller yet, a veteran. Jackson Powers Johnson, different story for me. And I wrote about this on Sports Not, and I and I kind of chronicled the injury history of Jackson Powers Johnson. So going back to Oregon, his last year at Oregon, he battled, I believe, hip injury, a hip injury. Hip. Right. And another injury that kind of hampered him a bit. He had to pull, he had to shorten his time at the, during the senior bowl week because he had a hamstring injury. Uh, Jim Nagy, uh, who, who's uh, basically in charge of the senior bowl, said it was a pre existing injury. Then Jackson Powers Johnson gets to Raiders camp and he missed a portion of OTAs because of a shoulder injury. So here you got hip. Hamstring shoulder for Jackson Powers Johnson. I remember during the draft process, I wrote a piece up on Bleach Report, and I wrote that the reason that Jackson Powers Johnson could slip out of the first round is because teams are worried about his medicals. Yeah. So he winds up in the second round. The Raiders get great value for him, but this I don't want to say it reminds me of Tyree Wilson because Tyree Wilson actually had surgery last offseason. Jackson right. Powers Johnson is not, as far as we know, isn't recovering from a surgery, but it's in the same lane where if you have a rookie, even a top rookie, a first, second round pick who misses quality time during the offseason, it's hard for that rookie to hit the ground running in the regular season. So for the people, including you and I, who believe Jackson Powers Johnson is the start at left guard, we yeah. may have to pump the brakes on that and start thinking about Andrews P starting at left guard or Cody Whitehair, because if a rookie misses significant time, it's going to be hard for him to start week one. Right, and 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 that's the concern. And remember, too, they have I think it's eight days before they put the pads on, right? So so there's still time 
and and I I like the the kind of way you put it. You have some fingers on the <laughs> on the the Three panic fingers. button, but not not you're not all the way full palm on that puppy, right? And and I think it's just something to watch because listen, you always are going to have in the NFL. Every team has some sort of injuries depending on where they're at. Uh, and so you expect it, even early in camp, a guy like Colton Miller, okay, came off surgery. So you, you expect him not to just roll right out there usually, uh, but it will get concerning if we get to the first preseason game or which would be those preseason games, very important for a young player like Jackson Powers Johnson to get in there. Antonio Pierce said he was playing his guys. He said this in the press conference. We're going to talk about his press conference in the second segment, and then we're going to get to your phone messages and texts in the, the Raider Nation mailbag in segment three, by the way. But he talked about it, that he's going to play his guys. We're starting to see this. I saw uh, Zach Taylor's press conference in Cincinnati at the start of their camp. He said, our guys are playing in the preseason. There's this kind of changing of a mindset, not everywhere, but a lot of places in the NFL says, hey, especially in the AFC, you got to get off to a fast start. And so we can't waste time. We're going to play guys. But if Jackson Powers Johnson isn't ready to go, and misses some of those preseason games because of that injury, and even you know, Colton Miller, the same thing, then you get a little more concerned, Mo, because then there will be have missed practices in pads, right? They're dealing with a, a whole new set of issues on offense, new players, same quarterback. Gardner Minshew's a new quarterback to the system. So to me, the longer it goes on, the more you're going to get concerned and, and don't have to press the panic button but it certainly might mean the Raiders do something on the offensive line. They like who they have, but if those guys are are looking like they're not going to get back in time, then we might see the Raiders see what's on the market and go out and get somebody uh, as an insurance policy. Yeah, I mean, Connor Williams is probably the most known interior offensive lineman who's still out there. I believe he's visiting with a, another team. Excuse me who it is, but he is on making his rounds with visits right now. He's coming off mm -hmm. of a torn ACL, though. I, I don't think the Raiders will dip into the guard interior offensive lineman market simply because they again they have multiple options there at left guard if Jackson Powers Johnson isn't ready to go. I mentioned Andrews Pete, who's a 10-year veteran, and I mentioned Cody Whitehair, who's a nine-year veteran. So those and Cody Whitehair has played under Luke Getze before. So they they have a pieces in place to fill in just in case their rookie second rounder isn't ready. I just want to pump the brakes on the Jackson Powers Johnson is going to start train right now, simply because of the hit, the, the string of injuries he suffered going back yeah. to his last year to Oregon. The other thing I didn't mention, and I feel like we should have mentioned this, is that Jackson Powers Johnson mostly played center at Oregon. Right. So technically, he's playing a new position. If he's if he's going to be the starting left guard, I know it's still on the interior, but it's still a different position than he played as a one year starter at Oregon. Didn't play a lot of guard there, so. This is why the, the snaps, the reps he's going to get or should get this summer are very important for him because he's moving over a spot. He's had some injuries, you know, the, the, you know, not to say it's going to be some rust there, but you want to gain some confidence that he can play for long stretches without getting hurt. Right. And, and it's just so important, too, with the way that offense is going to work and the limitations they have at quarterback. Now, these guys might have good seasons. That's fine. But still, you need – you need to have your trenches and it looks like on defense, you know, things look good. Everybody's healthy over there. You talked about Tyree Wilson, but offensive line in the trenches, there's now big question marks. You still had the question mark. Will Thayer Munford jr. Who they put a lot of faith in on that right side. Mo um, is he going to be able to, to, to be up to the task at a full-time basis uh, and be the guy moving forward. So you have that question mark still, although they believe very strongly in him, but that left side now, I mean, both guys, and that's that's a big red flag. But like you said, I'm not going crazy and panicking yet, but I do believe if we get to padded practices next week and those guys are still having trouble and can't get out there at all, and that lingers on a little more, then uh, we're going to have, I think, a serious issue with that. I think we have a serious issue if both if neither Correct. Colton Miller nor – Jackson Powers Johnson could come back and, and actually play because then you're looking at Andrews Pete at left tackle and mm -hmm. you're looking at Cody Whitehair probably at left guard, which isn't terrible. But what you're going to have is you're you're basically already thin at your offensive line position. Remember, Thayer Mumford behind him, 
that would make DJ Glaze your primary swing tackle. So now you're you're definitely banking on Thayer Mumford to to be that solid start at right tackle because if he's not, that offensive line is going to have a lot of issues there. Could have a lot of issues there. So you the thing is you want to get into week one as healthy as possible. You don't want right. to get into week one all banged up already because it's a long season. You yep. know, we, we got we already have 18 weeks, 17 games. The NFL is talking about pushing to 18 games already. It's a long season. So you you if you're coming into the season already banged up, then it's kind of an uphill battle, especially if you have those cluster injuries at certain positions. You have a bunch of wide receivers, you have a bunch of offensive linemen out. You don't you want you want to avoid those cluster injuries because then you're starting to have to fill pieces in during the regular season. Yeah, no question. I and I think that. You this this team it's at it's an interesting point and we'll talk about it when I talk about because I want to give you some thoughts on on Antonio Pierce's press conference. Um, I I just think that this team they they have such a good vision for where they want to be. It seems very clear. They have a culture that they're developing. They already kind of stated it last year when when Pierce took over. And so now you get that first opportunity. You get everybody together. They're away from Vegas, so they're. They're kind of they're kind of cloistered away in Costa Mesa, of course, and and to me everything's going great, everything's swimmingly well. So this has the ability to where like, look, hey, things happen. You're going to have to go on without it. Doesn't mean the Raiders can't be successful per se. It just makes it more difficult. So we'll see how it all goes. But uh, but yeah, to have both of them, hopefully, uh, um, my bet would be we don't know the, the extent of the 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 issues with Jackson Powers Johnson. We know Colt Miller had surgery, and it takes time to come back from surgery. So. You get that. So I would expect him to actually be back sooner, but we don't know what's going on with Jackson Powers Johnson. Maybe we'll get some more detail as we move forward in the in the in the course of this camp. Again, I'm I'm less worried about Colton Miller simply right. because he if he if he's ready to go and clear to practice and play a week before week one, fine. Yeah, he's played he's left side position there, he's been there. Right. For, for quite a while now. So you can plug him in as soon as he's ready. This Jackson Powers Johnson, I'm a little concerned because, again, it's not just the injury now. It's the injury pileup going back to his last year to Oregon. Battled multiple injuries. Had to pull out a senior bowl week. Missed, o missed a portion of OTAs. Now starting off on the pup list. So there's there's a pattern. There's a trend here with him. And, again, those those reps as for a rookie, any rookie, top to bottom, first to seventh round are very important, especially – Again, if you're playing a different position, as Jackson Powers Johnson would be if he moves to left guard. That's right. All right, we're up against our first break here on Silver and Black today. When we come back, we're going to talk about Antonio Pierce's first press conference. I noticed some things that that had me pretty pumped up uh, just because it, it was different. It felt different to me, and I'll explain that when we come back. We'll also talk about some of the roster moves the Raiders made. And then in the final segment of the show, we will get to a few of your messages on the Raider Nation mailbag. You're listening to Silver and Black today, an Odyssey Original Sports podcast covering the Las Vegas Raiders, also heard on the radio, 101.5 KDWN in Las Vegas on the FM side and the bet in Las Vegas, too. Coming back right after this. Welcome back. Silver and Black today here on 101.5 KDWN FM. KDWN, also the bet in Las Vegas, also an Odyssey Sports original podcast. Please subscribe to the show wherever you get your audio and you can listen to us. Scott, Mo, back with you here. And Mo, a couple of things. One is before we were talking about uh, the injuries to the offensive line, obviously with Jackson Powers Johnson and Colton Miller coming off of surgery, but also a surprise roster move in that Michael Gallup, the wide receiver, the, the Raiders signed uh, from the Cowboys, who's a free agent. Retired, 28 years old, retired. We see that every year. It seems like there's one guy signs a contract, gets to camp and is like, mm, or is about to go to camp and just says, yeah, no, nah, I'm good. And so uh, we didn't hear any details, but I'm assuming that's what happened with Michael Gallup. He's just decided he doesn't want to play anymore. Yeah, I think that time between mandatory mini camp and training camp is a time a lot of players kind of think about their future. It gives them a lot of time to think. They're not practicing. Some of them are working out, but they're you know they're not required to report to the facility. They kind of they not kind of some of a lot of them spend time with their families. A lot yeah. of them have children, and they decide you know what, I want to commit the rest of my lifetime to my family, my or whatever else that I want to do with my life. Maybe another chapter going to do something else. Shaquille Barrett, a two-time Super Bowl champion same, with the Miami Dolphins, same thing. Uh, 
right before camp starts for the for the Dolphins, he decides he's ready to hang him up. And he said he wanted to help his kids and his wife and his family realize their dreams like he realized his is an undrafted rookie free agent out of Colorado State. So uh, that's a time where guys get to reflect and think about, do I want to do this? Do I want to commit to this or not? And I and, and Michael Gallup you know, decided he wanted to hang him up at the young age of 28 years old. Yeah, and uh, I mean, got to do what's right for you and your family. Absolutely. Uh, bummer, though. I was actually looking forward to him being a contributor in some way or at least yeah. pushing there mm-hmm. because it's always good to have competition in camp and it's too bad he's not going to be there. So we'll see if the Raiders make some sort of corresponding move for that spot. I don't know, but uh, that's what camp's all about. We, t- we talked about it all the time here, right, that there's a lot of moves during camp, uh, even at the very beginning. And we've seen that not only the retirements, but some signings. And some contract extensions, which we, we've heard around uh, the league, including uh, some of the bigger ones uh, and some of the holdouts, right? We got holdouts, uh, including uh, in Dallas with C.D. Lamb. So uh, that time of the year. Mo, OK, I want to talk to you about this. I, I'm watching the Antonio Pierce press conference yesterday. And one of the things, if, if, if I could be critical of Antonio Pierce coming into his interim before he got named permanent coach and even a little bit after, was that you know that that job of taking over for Josh McDaniels, rescuing their season as much as he could, and kind of setting a standard so that the guys wanted to play there, they felt good about it, and that they really played for him. Um, that was a different role. And so when when we got towards the end of the season, the only criticism I would have of him is not really a criticism, just a, just a, a, an observation was he didn't really talk much about football. It was much more rah, 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 rah. And that's important stuff. Don't get me wrong. Coach has to do that. The press conference this week to start uh, a training camp, I saw the difference in Antonio Pierce. More comfortable. Obviously, he's got the job. Now it's his ship. He gets to, to steer it. But also, he got, w- with questions that came in from the media, he got more specific. And he was also, I thought, I just felt the confidence in him. He's always been a confident guy, obviously. You don't have that background and not be. But I felt, I felt it. I really felt like, okay, this is a head coach. Like, this is an NFL head coach. He knows exactly what he wants to do. What he doesn't know, he's got guys on his staff. He talked about Marvin Lewis again since since he's he's new to the to the role. But he also said things like, hey, when they asked him about the quarterback situation. You know, last year's oh, Aiden, Aiden, Aiden's great, and he did this, and he deserves that, and he deserves, and, and it was all true. He meant it, but now they asked him. He said, "Hey, we'll see, we'll see. I'm not going to give you any hints or tell you who's got an edge or whatever. I, those guys are going to compete." So I felt it. I don't know if you saw the same thing I did, but I just saw the difference between Antonio Pierce in January of last year after Week 18 and Antonio Pierce standing at just training camp in his presser. I just was really impressed with how he performed. I think he learned a little more coach speak at the podium. So that, I think that, that whole that that whole quarterback thing, because a lot of people have been talking up Aiden O'Connor, including Devontae Adams, and he yeah. appeared on Club Shay Shay with Shannon Sharp, basically saying, you know, be patient with Aiden O'Connell and 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 Pierce did what head coaches are supposed to do, uh, speak confidence into their guys. Because right. that was that was one of the main problems that the Raiders had under Josh McDaniels is that he wasn't a motivator. Right. And the Raiders needed that. Even grown men that make millions, they need motivation. And I think Antonio Pierce brought that. Now he's bringing more of the, the buttoned up, I'm not going <laughs> to give you anything. I'm going to give you the diplomatic answer instead of what I may actually think about the quarterback competition. Maybe, you know, and, and I don't think he's lying or anything, but I think it's no. true that there is no clear-cut leader in that quarterback competition right now because it's still early. You haven't even put the pads on yet. So right. how can you have a clear-cut leader between the two when we really haven't seen Gardner Minshew really in a Raider uniform and Aiden O'Connell coming into his second year is going to have a lot to prove at training camp, though he showed that he, you know, vocally as a leader, there are some, there's some development there. I think if Devontae Adams spoke about that during the spring. So we'll see how it plays out this summer and during training camp. Right. And, and before you get on the press and say, well, are they asking that stupid question when they haven't even gotten on the field yet? The question in my view as someone who's written professionally and all that is that you're trying to get to mindset. You're just trying to see where he's at. He doesn't actually know who's going to win the competition, but if you can get the coach to say something, well, like he did before, which is, well, I think Aiden's got an edge right now because of last year. Oh, oh, then you get that right. Then you understand what's mm-hmm. at play. So to your point about coach speak, and I think it's, and, and, and I know this is such a great sign. Now, look, I have look, Marvin Lewis was a great coach at one level, never could win in the playoffs 
But I certainly <laughs> saw, I certainly saw, I think the influence of somebody like Marvin Lewis and some of the other people like Tom Coughlin, who's got on speed dial in how he's presenting himself. So I credit Antonio Pierce for understanding that in his role now, it's not just being the coach. You're the face of the team. And look, he did a fine job at the press conferences and stuff like that last year, talking to the public. But you saw the difference. You saw that he's been putting in the work, right? Not only in coaching the team and talent acquisition and that kind of stuff, but also the, the other duties that you have to do as, quote unquote, the CEO of this football team. And uh, I was just really impressed with it. I, I thought it's not that I wasn't thinking he could. It's just when you see it and you see them in a good place, to me, that sends a signal even to the, the guys on the team, Mo, that the composure, how he handles himself has shown growth in that short period of time. I think the main thing with him is that he has to now know when to pick his spots, when to be blunt and honest. Mm -hmm. So you could be a blunt and honest person and that's fine, but you know how the media works and we're, you know, we're media content creators. Any little thing you say, any little edge you give the media, they're going to stretch those words oh, and yes. you don't want to make, you don't want to make head unnecessary headlines. And I think that's, that's, the landmine that you have to kind of watch out for as a new head coach, you know, you can't just be blunt and honest and say exactly what's on your mind because that can be spun into, you know, 50 different ways. Sure. So you have to kind of package what you say in a certain way so that it's not spun in the media and it doesn't cause a distraction because at this time, what you're trying to avoid at training camp are distractions. You don't want headline distractions. You don't want off field distractions. You want guys to be totally dialed in you don't want them paying attention to what the media is saying about the quarterback competition, which is very important, obviously. And you just want to keep everything in-house close to the vest. Yeah, and I like what he said, even though I, I coaches often will say this, when a team is doing camp away from their home city, oh, it's great, we get away from distractions. And, you know, we saw the Raiders do that with practice before a game. If you remember when Josh McDaniels took them to, where the hell was it, New Hampshire? I, I can't remember. But um, <laughs> Connecticut, I don't know where it was. West Virginia was West Virginia. That's what it was. Uh, um, and so, so, but I think in this case, it's good for this team to get out of the heat. Number one, and yes, they have an indoor facility, but they still spend a lot of time outside. So I think that, that them being, especially with this new culture that they've cultivated and need to grow with a bunch of new players on this team to be away from the, the trappings of life, your family and all that stuff. Uh, for these guys, for these days, is is important too, and I think uh, will will benefit this team going into an early season because they have to get a quick start. They absolutely have to get a quick start in that division. You know, I know people are questionable with the Chargers roster, but the Chargers did upgrade a head coach. That's without a doubt. Uh, we'll see what the Broncos look like. I still think they're at the bottom of the division, but you got to respect this Super Bowl winning head coach. Mm -hmm. And of course, the Chiefs are going for a three peat, and you know who the Chiefs are. So, <laughs> you, you know, anything you can do to kind of get guys together and kind of have, and, and you hear this a lot camaraderie. You know, I think Antonio Pierce also said he wants this to be the most together Raider team that we've seen in a long time. Mm -hmm. And I think that's also important, even though mostly the defense is still together. You see, you have a new offensive coordinator. You have some new, you have a Brock Bowers added to the mix. You have you know, a new running back sharing the backfield with Samir White. You know, you have new offensive linemen st in starting positions. You know, they, they're every year you're the roster is changing. So you have to build that chemistry. And that's what you're doing through the summer at training camp. Yeah, no doubt about it. Uh, it'll be interesting to watch it all unfold, and we'll be here for all of it. Okay, we're coming up on our second break here on this edition of Silver and Black today. When we come back, we're going to get to the Raider Nation mailbag. I should say just Ra voice of Raider Nation now because it's mostly calls. We don't get that many emails anymore. i got to give a shout-out to our buddy Garen Harkin Gary Harkinreader who emails us every week during the season. Gary, we miss you, brother. Send us that note, man. We're worried about you. We want to make sure you didn't like bound off to somewhere with uh, a young lass or something. Make sure you uh, send us a note. But if you want to call in and leave a message for the next show, 702-900-7869 is that number. You're with Mo and Scott. This is Silver and Black today. We're coming back and we're going to hear from you. Don't go anywhere. Enough of hearing us talk about the Raiders. It's time to hear from you. Any Oakland Raider fan, Las Vegas Raider fan, stand up. 
on this edition of the Raider Nation Mailbag. That, that, that black hole rock and rolling. Don't be a wallflower. Be a part of the show. Leave your question or message by calling 702-900-7869. That's 702-900-7869. Or drop us an email at mail at silverandblacktoday.com. All right, there you go. We got some new some new uh, bumpers, Mo. You like that? Top of the show, we got a new one. We got a new mailbag. Got to get fresh for the for the new season. Yeah, I like it. some some shows. You know, they want to stick for years and years with the same stuff, and that's nothing wrong with it. I just like I always look at a new season as a completely fresh start, not only for the team but for our show as well. So I like to switch the music out, and we got some other things coming up too. So it's pretty cool. But anyway, we are going to get to your messages. 702-900-7869 is the number. Mail at silver and black today. Dot com. You can also text us at that same number if you want to send it that way. Are you ready for this, Mo? We got one about, about you and food or something. No, I'm just kidding. We don't. But uh, we have a new caller from Florida, as they would say it on the East Coast. Florida. Ready for Florida. this? Fort Lauderdale. Spent some time there a couple times when I was younger. Fun times. Good times. All right. We're going to AJ. <laughs> In Fort Lauderdale, our first caller up here on the Raider Nation mailbag. Scott and Mo, what's up, fellas? My name is AJ, calling from Fort Lauderdale. Big fan of the show, guys. Mo, super big fan of yours, man. Been following since like 2014, 2015. Uh, drop some fantasy gems for us this year, man. You didn't drop them for us last year. <laughs> so my question for you guys is, what do you think we do as far as the corner position goes this year and the acquisitions? Right? Uh, we have Jack Jones, as you guys mentioned on the show. Looking forward to see if he can take that next step this year. And then slot guy Nate Hobbs, not worried about it there. But then after that, the big drop off, man. It's a big drop off of a big concern. Not too, not too happy with what they currently have. I'm curious to see if you guys think we sign anybody. Um, maybe a Dory Jackson kind of makes a lot of sense there, right? Familiarity with with Pat Graham's system there. Maybe he can even help in the return game a little bit. No, we did a little in New York there, especially with the new kick return rules this year, right? Um, the older guys, I don't know if it makes too much sense for me, right? Like your Stephon Gilmore, your your Patrick Peterson. Xavier Howard, kind of at the back end of their careers, uh, maybe want to compete, you know, with a contender at this point. Um, just don't know who else would make sense at this point. Maybe J.C. Jackson, right? That either makes a ton of sense or no sense at all, whatever, Tom. <laughs> so let's go sing and with how that stint in L.A. went for him. Um, so, yeah, just let me know what you guys think of what we do for the quarterback position. Big fan of the show, guys. I appreciate you. All right. A.J. in Fort Lauderdale, man. Thanks for calling in for the first time. Don't be a stranger. We appreciate you. And a good question. We talked about it on our last show on Tuesday as a matter of fact. And I think, I think the, the, the assessment on my end and your end too, Mo, and, and you jump in here in a sec, but it's, it's Jacorian Bennett's there. They like Jacorian Bennett. I know he's not a Telesco pick, but they like him. And I think if the first couple of weeks of camp go really well and, and he's lighting it up and they're feeling good about it, maybe they don't go the veteran route, but the names he mentioned to Dory Jackson, I don't think Stefan Gilmore, I mean, he had a, he had a resurgent year last year. So I don't think he'd be off the table either. I think, I still think we're a couple weeks away from knowing exactly what they do. I don't think they'll sign somebody right away unless there's some kind of injury, God forbid. But I, I just think that they're going to wait and see. And then if they feel like there's a need, then they'll go out and grab somebody. So shout out to my guy at, Chris at Protect the Show podcast. I think we're the last, we might be two of the last people on the Jacorian Bennett bandwagon. <laughs> we're still there. We still believe in Jacorian Bennett. I actually think Jacorian Bennett is going to win the job. Oh, I hope he I'm wins not the going job. that far. I, I, I think he's going to win the job. I think he he's actually going to going to take a step. It's hard for some cornerbacks to make that transition. You're going against the, the, the biggest and the best wide receivers in the world. Give it, give it some time. I, I think he'll show out in training camp. I think he'll be one of the standouts. So I, I'm sticking with Jacorian Bennett. But if the Raiders were to go outside of their building, outside of their facility out there in Costa Mesa, uh, the three big names we mentioned, Stephon Gilmore, Xavier Howard, and J.C. Jackson. Uh, Dory Jackson, four big names. So Dory Jackson, I agree with you, A.J., is probably the name that I would go with. Play, as you mentioned, play with Patrick Graham, has some special teams ability, some return ability with that speed. Uh, like you play inside and and outside. If you need, if Hobbs goes down, remember Hobbs has missed, I believe, ten plus games over the last two years. Keep that in mind. And the Raiders don't have a backup slot cornerback after they let go of Meek Robertson and Hall and, and allowing Hall to go to Philadelphia. So 
they need a backup slot cornerback, and they also need a starter to step up. And I think with Adore Jackson, he can kind of fill in in both spots. Now, with J.C. Jackson, I'm staying away from that. It, Tom Tusco tried it with J.C. Jackson. He was their big offseason signing a couple years ago, mm-hmm. and it was a disaster within two years. Stay completely away from J.C. Jackson. He had some discipline issues when he went back to New England, and this is why he's a free agent still available. With Xavier Howard, there's some off-field things going on there. If you want to look it up, <laughs> Google his name, and I'm not going to talk about it on this show because it's, it's grotesque, but yeah. uh, there are some off-field things that can scare teams away from Xavier and Howard. So I'm looking at if you're going to add someone to potentially line up on the outside or Dory Jackson, if you're looking for a backup slot, again, Tyler Hall going to Philadelphia, the Raiders did not resign him. Mm-hmm. Then you're looking at a Shandon Sullivan maybe who played in Pittsburgh recently, played with Minnesota Vikings, played the Green Bay Packers, um, and maybe even Patrick Peterson – who's older, longer in the tube. He knows he's at this point a backup, a fill-in player. He's played inside and outside. If you're looking for a veteran, then that then that's, I guess, who you would consider. By the way, AJ, there will be more fantasy football content coming. Hang tight on that. Bleacher Prize has me working on it, so stay tuned for that. This is more fantasy football for me here to come. Yes, and he's he's a big fan. Ten years as a fan. That's a long time. Um, he did send – he's got pictures of your apartment, so he knows where you live. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> but, no, all good, AJ. Appreciate you calling in, man. That's also, AJ. we're going we're gonna to get to the next call in a minute, but I have to shout out to our man Jacob in Fresno who called in, but whatever cell area you were in, it was your, your standard intro, which still makes me laugh, and then silence for a minute and a half. So – couldn't put your call on, man. There was just there was nothing there. I don't know what happened with a bad sell or whatever. So uh, that's the way it goes. But so this show will not have a Jacob from Fresno call. How can we not have Jacob from Fresno on? I know, I know. It's too it's a sad day. Uh, all right. Well, we have a we had a caller last show, Screwy Louie. Remember from Oregon? Mm-hmm. He's back today, and uh, we're going to get ah. to him. And again, if you want to call in and leave a message, 702-900-7869. Or you email us, mail at silverandblacktoday.com. And, of course, you can also text us at that 702-900-7869 number, and we'll get you on the air as we start to roll towards <gasps> football season. Yes. All right. Here is Screwy Louie in Oregon. Hey, this is Screwy Louie in Oregon. Um, <laughs> how's my two favorite homeboys doing today? <laughs> um, I only had one concern being the old G, not an original gangster, more like the old guy on your <laughs> podcast. Um, the old line, from what I understand, um, Colton Miller ha- still has a nagging shoulder injury, and mm-hmm. Bowers Johnson has issues. So, my main concern is if we open the season without him. We're going to have to do a, a two tight end set, I think, and use the 12 men um, set up more often and maybe lobby in the um, backfield so we can dink and dunk our way down the field. That way the blind side for AOC won't um, be as vulnerable. He's going to have to play like Tom Brady if that's the case. <laughs> so I think if we can do that, use up some clock, take our time, might not score many points, but it'll it'll keep our defense fresh. So when the fourth quarter comes around, they won't be all gassed out. So I think if we do that, especially with the injuries on the left side, or make some switches to make things um, easier for AOC or Mincy, whoever is quarterback um, during the first couple of games, it'll be very important to win I think the first game against um, the Chargers, because then we, ha- I believe we have to face Baltimore. That's going to be a tough task. Yep. So if we're, if we're 0 and 2 in the beginning of the season, it'll take it'll take a lot out of the Raiders. I think their their confidence won't be as strong. But if we can at least win one of those games, so I'm thinking they're going to have to dink and dunk a lot if they have issues with starting. Um, Colton Miller and Powers Johnson on the left side. So um, give me your analysis. Uh, I appreciate you guys. Um, Hang in there, and hopefully we'll have a good year. Take care. Bye. All right. Screwy Louie in Oregon. Good call. Original G. The OG. 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 (laughs) 
OG, which is funny. Uh, but thank you, man. We appreciate the call. And yeah, I mean, you look at some, you look at what the Raiders have. We talked about DJ Glaze, right? Um, some, if if they get into a situation, and, and again, hopefully that's not the case. Hopefully both those guys are back, and that solves that. But you have at tackle, you have Andrew Coker, the young guy I know plays the other side, correct? So, but but you could move those guys around. You also have um, backup guards as well. We've talked about in the in in the past. So so I get it. I think I know what he's saying, and that's why we've talked about earlier in this show them getting off to a fast start. I think that that Charger game, even if they deal with those injuries, and and I would imagine something crazy happens i would just imagine at least colton miller will be there so that's a big one um, but but i do think that that charger game mo and and what this offensive line is able to do and what the offense is able to do we just don't know yet but his point is well taken is that they're going to have to get off to a good start and oh and two start would not be good the important part of this conversation about the left side of the offensive line the injuries is you're going to see khalil mack and joey bosa mm -hmm. and tui to to Vilatu in the first game that's a that's a pretty good pass rushing trio, and to have a banged up offensive line coming into that situation is, is going to be a yes. rough go. You don't want Khalil Mack taking over the game like he did in the first Raiders Chargers game when he sacked mm -hmm. sacked the end of count multiple times. Devontae Adams talked about it on Club Shay Shay, but I, I I'm not going to say this simple because this is a Raider podcast, and I'm trying to sell you rainbows and unicorns, but. <laughs> If let's say Colton Miller and Jackson Powers Johnson aren't able to play week one, you still have a 10 year veteran in Andrews P at left tackle, who played well at left tackle for the New Orleans Saints last year. And again, Cody Whitehair, who's a nine year veteran who has experience in Luke Getty's system. So it's not a it's not a dire situation. It's not right. a deal, obviously. You want your starters there. You obviously want Colton Miller out there because he's a better player. Yeah. But it's not like you're throwing out a player or players who have barely started games or are backup or career backups or rookies out there. Andrews mm -hmm. Pete has been a, a, basically a starter his entire career. This would be his first year as, you know, as really a, a primary backup Cody Whitehair, pretty, pretty similar where he's been a pretty much a starter his most of his career and pro bowler years and years ago. But I, again, I just don't see the situation as dire. You want Colton Miller, obviously out there ASAP. Yes, we don't know what Jackson Powers Johnson is going to be. We haven't seen him play on the pro level yet, but uh, to have two experienced veterans with nine and ten years of experience isn't a bad fallback plan. But again, <laughs> can they match up to Joey Bosa and Khalil Mack is the question. That's a big question. Uh, but we appreciate the call, Screwy Louie. Always awesome. And again, you can you can take part in the call uh, and, or excuse me in the show by calling in seven zero two nine hundred seven eight six nine. Leave us a message. Really interesting. I got, you got Mo and I like to talk off the air. We get some doozy, doozy YouTube comments, right? Not by most of the people who watch the show regularly, but just some funny ones like, oh, you have the same callers. I'm like, well, they like to call in. What do you want me to do? Like, call in, call in. Like, <laughs> we have, lo I mean, I, the fact that we have loyal listeners who want to call in all the time is great. Like, I don't need 18 different callers every show. I love that we get that. Now, it's all good, but but we love for you to call in. And again, if you're shy and you don't want to call in, text us, and we will get to it as well. So there you go. Um, and that's the mailbag for this edition of the show. We certainly appreciate you guys all being with us. Mo, before we go, it's, it's, it's plug time. So let everybody know. I know you got a piece up on Sports Not uh, right now. Tell everybody what you got going with that, and then – when the makeup, you got to get in the makeup chair for TV and get in your limo and all that. Let everybody know. <laughs> no TV for me until August 22nd over on TNT Sports Tonight with Koi Wire. We'll talk. We'll, I'll sneak in some Raider conversations, but that comes at the end of the month. But right now, I just want to shout everyone who joined me over at Bleach Report on my Thursday show. I will have another show August 1st where I'll break down my thoughts on the 50 man roster, who makes the cut, who doesn't. Of course, it'll be early by that time. We're beginning to start to look look at or examine some of the padded practices that the Raiders are going to have next week. So at that point, it's a good time to start looking at how the 50-man roster is going to form. Of course, I'm going to be over at Sports Not, uh, just updating my thoughts on the premier battles at training camp. Cornerback, obviously quarterback, 
any other backup positions. There are some depth issues there now. We may have at wide receiver with Michael Gallup retiring due to Raiders at another wide receiver. Jalen Guyton is also on the inactive yeah. list. So he so who knows? Maybe the Raiders add another wide receiver. Uh, but they can make some changes. It's still very early in the process of evaluating this roster leading up to preseason. Of course, their first preseason game, I believe, is against the Minnesota Vikings August mm -hmm. 10th. So they can do a lot of tinkering before that time. Right around the corner. It's coming quick. And I know everybody's excited. Even the preseason game, which I know, but it's, hey, it's football. They're in uniform. They're out there. And I think, like Antonio Pierce said this year, guys, gotta play. they're going to play their guys. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying, you know, the quarterbacks obviously are in a competition, so you got to see them play. Uh, how long they play, we'll see. But um, they're going to get some playing time, so that'll be great for all of us to do it. What will also be great is we will be back here with you next week on Tuesday if you're listening to the podcast, and we'll be back with you on Thursday and Sunday over on radio. Remember, KDWN 101.5 FM, as well as the Bet in Las Vegas. If you're on HD radio, you can hear us there. Um, but we'll be back talking about it. We'll have much more to talk about, too. We're going to start to get reports out of camp. We're going to start to see what the Raiders do. Do they make some moves? Not only with positions that they might, but injury-related, all that kind of stuff. This is when the machine mo starts moving for everybody in the NFL, and uh, we're all here for it, and we can't wait to talk to you guys about it. Mo, my friend, I will talk to you early next week. Have a great weekend. Talk to you soon. All right. For our producer, Mike Robbie, a former Moten, I am Scott Colbranson. Do us a favor. Make sure you not only subscribe to the show, but please give it a rating wherever you uh, subscribe to it. We would appreciate that as always. To our YouTube audience, thank you again for being with us and thanks for the lively chat. As always, we will see you guys all next week. Take care. Have a great weekend.